weird things. Obviously, where I say evaluate. If you don't remember how to do these with your calculator, then you obviously weren't able to evaluate them. But otherwise, you should have been okay. Does anybody wish to ask about one, three, one, two, three, or four? Loudest cart in the world. Oh, I'll make this easier for everybody. There's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. And there's an answer. And obviously all of this is answer. Number three, okay. So, Yulia, if I gave you this, 3x times x plus 2, what would you do? Yeah, you'd multiply that in, right? Okay, so multiply that in. What is x cubed times x? x to the fourth. And what is x cubed times x to the negative 3? What do I do with those exponents? No. I'm multiplying x cubed times x to the negative 3. What is that? No. I add the exponents, right? So what do I get? 3 plus, 3 plus negative 3. It's 0, right? So x to the 0 is what? 1. So I have x to the 4th plus 1. x is 1 half. So I have 1 half to the 4th power plus 1, which is 1 over 2 to the 4th power plus 1 which is 1 over 16 plus 1, but 1 is 16 sixteenths. So the answer is 17 sixteenths. Okay? Uh, everybody good with 4? Yes? I mean, you can see most of the work is there for the first one, and then it's pretty self-explanatory. Everyone is good? Once, twice, thrice. Okay. Five. Now, five gets a little crazy. There's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. There's an answer. There. There. Hard to see. There. And there. Anybody wish to ask about any of them? I will tell you right now, the other class asked about H, so if you have to ask about H, do not feel bad. Many people in the other class asked about H. Yeah? Anything before H, or are we comfortable? Don't waste too much time writing it all down because it's all being recorded. Allie. Pardon? A. A or H? A. H, yeah. I'm going to do H for sure. I'm going to, I'm going to redo it for everybody and go through it slowly. But nobody has anything before H. Everyone's happy. Okay, now H is very difficult because there's so many ways you could go about doing it, right? So you got to, I, I can't show you every single way. It'll take like 15 minutes. So I'm going to work through my way, the way I would approach this problem. And you just tell me if you don't understand something I did, Okay. So the first thing I personally would do, I would go step by step. I would isolate stuff that I need to tidy up. I need to tidy up that, right? And I need to tidy up that, right? So let's tidy up those two things. What would I do there? Well, that's going to become A to the four thirds, right? Because one third times four. We're all cool there, yes? Yes over 9. Everyone's good? Now, divided by a fraction, that's multiplied by the reciprocal, right? 
So this 81 and three quarters is gonna come up there and the A is gonna go down there. Is everyone cool with that? Okay, now, I see a nine here. Do I know any relationship between nine and 81? What is it? Isn't this nine squared? So isn't this nine squared to the three quarters? Which would make that nine to the six fourths, right? But we would not leave that fraction because we remember Mrs. Bag Crumble would have been very angry with us if we left that as a fraction, yeah? So what would we make it? Three over two, correct? And down here I had A. Now, does order matter when you're multiplying? Is five times two the same as two times five? So couldn't I change this order to be this? A to the four thirds, I mean. And now I'm just dividing, aren't I? What do I do with my exponents when I'm dividing? I subtract. Three halves take away one. Well, one is two halves, right? So what's three halves take away two halves? Nine to the one half, which is, of course, the same as the square root of nine, which is three. And four thirds minus one, one is three thirds, correct? Four thirds take away three thirds is a to the one third, correct? But we don't want a to the one third because we wanted radicals and a power. Well, there's the power, three a to the one third, and here's the radical, three cube root a, because that one third, of course, only applies to the a. Everybody cool? All right. And then this one, oh, I forgot to do that one as a radical. So that one is uh, the square root of 9 root 9 cubed, so it's 27. So that's why I didn't do it as a radical, because you can't leave it as a radical. Yo, F. I'm also going to erase E right now just so I have some more room to work. Where are you going to tidy up? I would tidy up right there first, right? So I've got A cubed, B to the 1 half, and I'm going to switch the order here because order doesn't matter, B3. And what is 3 halves times 2? 3. A cubed, right? Now, what do I see? Same on the top and bottom. So what do I get to do? Cancel. And I'm left with this, right? What is, what do I do with those exponents? Subtract. 1 half minus 6 halves because 3 is 6 halves. And I need a common denominator. 1 minus 6 is b to the negative 1 fifth, Yes. Sorry, 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 to the negative one, sorry, negative five halves, right? Are negative exponents allowed? So it's one over b to the five halves. That's as an exponent, and then one over the square root of b to the fifth. And we could simplify that some more, but maybe you forget how to do that. That is our very next unit, which we are starting today to remind you how to do those if you don't remember. Cool? Okay. There is eight. Answers are highlighted. Work isn't as important because everybody is going to approach each question differently, yes? It is very important that you show work so I can see where you're making errors. But it's not as important that your steps match mine. Does everybody understand that? I can't make that clearer. You can do these any way you want, in any order you want, but you should still end up at the answers I have. Right? Is everybody okay with that, or does anybody want to see any of eight? We'll talk about ten separately, because it's its own thing. And I'm only showing you half of it right there. 
everyone okay with eight? All right. Ten. One, two, three, four. Oh, I guess that's the answer right there because I didn't highlight it. Five, six. Eight. B. Sure. Anything other than B? B and F. All right. So I can erase A and C so I have room to work. Again, if you were just copying down the right answers, please do that on your own time. That's why I do the YouTube stuff. I will do B first. Sorry? D? All right. B. Number times number. Negative 50. Letters and letters go together. I've got 8 and negative 12, both with B. So that gets me B to the negative 4. Right? And here I have 3 minus 12, which is B to the negative 9. Right? Now I add them. I get negative 50 B to the negative 13. What there is not allowed just that because 50 isn't part of the base so it is 50 over b to the 13th d decide where you're going to clean it up i would clean that up there's more than one way to do it i personally as soon as i see that negative three i know that this is now 1 over negative 2a cubed, all cubed. The 3 goes everywhere, so I have 1 over negative 8a to the ninth. Everyone is good there, yes? And then I've got 3a to the 12th, so that goes up top times 1, it's just 3a to the 12th. 12, 9 of them cancel. Nine of them cancel, leaving me with three. So I have three A cubed over eight, and the whole thing has to be negative because of that. And F. Again, as soon as I see that negative, I know this is all supposed to be over one, so I flip it. One over negative three, A to the fifth, B to the negative three. Do I care about that C? Why not? Because it's got a zero exponent, so it's worth one, right? No matter what C is, it's not helping me any because it's going to be one. Now all of that is squared because once I flipped it, I get rid of that negative. Is this negative with the base going to be squared? Is that part of it? So is the answer going to be positive or negative? Positive, because I have negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So I have 1 over 9, a to the 10th, 2 times 5, b to the negative 6. What there is not allowed? Anthony? Your b to the negative 6. Right, so it has to move back up to the numerator, not a to the 10th. Yeah, yeah? And then number 11, there is 11. Good. D. Sure. Okay. Okay. I would like to ask for a volunteer. You don't have to come up here, 
but I've already shown you guys how to do a ton of these. So I would like for somebody to tell me where they would start here. I'm gonna color code the three terms. You tell me where you would start. I'm actually even going to color code that divided by, because that might make a change somewhere. Where would one of you start? Just say a color. You'd start with green, Aiden? Okay. What do I need to do to this green? What's the hint here that is gonna give me something to do? The power of negative two, right? So this, which right now is over one, will become one over, yes? And it's all gonna be squared, right? Well, we'll write it all out, a eight, b negative nine. That's what it's gonna be, right? But let's just tidy it up right now. What is negative five squared? 25. Zara. Stop associating Julia Lee. Julia Lee. Follow that man right there, please. And what is eight squared? Don't say 64, because it's the power of eight squared. 16, a to the 16th. And what is negative nine to the power of two? Negative 18, right? But negative 18 won't be allowed, so where will it go? Up, so I'll write B, negative 18, but it's not really there, right? It's really up here, B to the 18th. And now we're cool with the green one, right? Now, if I were you, I see this divided by here, right? So what am I gonna be doing to this? When I'm dividing by a fraction, what do I do to this fraction? Anthony? I'm going to flip it again, aren't I? So this is going to become times, and I'm going to flip it. 25a to the 16th over b to the 18th, right? Remember I told you, every single thing you've ever done in math is in this class. Every single thing. Now let's come back over here. What color would we go to next, blue or yellow? I'd go to blue because of this negative three, right? So that negative three is gonna make it flip. One over negative two cubed is negative eight. A negative two cubed is A to the negative six, but it's in the denominator, so it's coming up. A to the sixth. B to the three is staying as B cubed, right? Because we flipped it. Now I got this guy over here. Is this yellow a numerator or a denominator? Numerator. So 5A3A6 is going to give me 5A to the 9th B squared. Now, can I do any tidying? When it's fractions, I go straight across, yeah? So what's 5 times 25? 125. A to the 9th, A to the 16th is A to the 25th. B squared and nothing is B squared over negative 8. 3 and 18 is B21. Now I just cancel. Cancel those two. Cancel two of those. And I'm done. Buddha. Great. That takes us to page 20, not 27 for you guys. That is page uh, 30 for you, where I have my little test reminders. Exponent laws. Page, I think it's page 8 in your book. It might be page 10. I can't remember. It is indeed page eight. No page eight. 
That's everything you need to know for this whole unit. It's all on one page. You just have to apply it. What will mess you up? B to the negative 3 to the negative 3. Some of you, this way, you all want to go 3 times 3, right? You all want to do that. Negative 3 times negative 3, that gets me B to the positive ninth. yes? Everybody understands that, right? Because you all understand the shortcut. You didn't. You haven't bothered learning what's really happening. What's really happening is this. That is 1 over B to the negative 3 to the positive 3. Right? Which is 1 cubed over B to the negative 9. 1 cubed is 1 over B to the negative 9. Negative 9 is not allowed, so this reciprocates to b to the 9th. The reason I am showing you this long way, even though there's a rule about it, is because when you get this, 3x to the negative 2, y to the 4, to the negative 3, a lot of you, when you reciprocate this, you are changing this to a positive. You can't. The only thing that changes is the outside one. Negative 2, y to the 4th, cubed. Once that is done, now you could move this if you wanted to. And you could go to x squared over 3y to the 4th, all cubed. That would be allowed. But if you change both of these, you're going to screw it up. Does everybody understand? That's the number one mistake you guys make with exponents. The number two mistake you make with exponents is this one. Does everybody see the difference here? This answer is what? 12a squared b to the fourth. This answer is what? 144a squared b to the fourth. That is a big mistake. Why? Because of the brackets. The third biggest mistake. Negative 8a squared to the negative 2. Is that negative staying there? No, I lied. Let's make it to the positive 2. What's that going to be? 64a to the 4th, right? Negative 8a to the negative 2. What's that? Negative 8 over a squared. This is allowed because it's a base. Everybody good? That is all of the mistakes that I find a majority of you make if you're going to make mistakes. Does everybody understand? The only other thing is something like this. Oops, oh, I got another page here. Uh, a squared, b to the negative 3, uh, c to the 8 over uh, a to the negative 6, b to the 4, c to the negative 3 all to the negative 2. This is kind of like the very first one. But it's a whole fraction now. What happens? What happens to that? What's the only thing that happens to it? It flips. Do any of these change when you flip them? No. That is a to the negative 6 over a squared b to the 4 over b to the negative 3, 
c to the negative 3 over c to the 8. And then it is all squared. That is the only one that changes. Now you have a choice. Do you bring that 2 to everything? Or do you simplify in here first? Who makes that choice? You do. Right? Because you're going to get the same answer regardless. Is everybody good? Exponents test, Tuesday the 17th. Five days from now. Five days from now. And it will be, you people are block D, yes? It will be second block of the day. So you will have had a whole 80 minutes to wake your brains up. And it even bumps into lunchtime if you think or feel or decide you need more time. It's like I planned it. Why? Grinchy heart. Two sizes too big. And it's only September. Wait until Christmas. Have any of you seen the movie Monty Python, The Meaning of Life? You know when the guy explodes and you see his heart? That's what will happen because my heart will be that big. But minus the swearing and the barfing. But maybe a French person will come in and talk to me in a French accent. That is funny. Have you seen the movie, Ash, and you understand what I'm speaking of? Okay. All right, are we all good? Yeah? Okay, deep cleansing breath. Take two minutes, because we're going to move on to the next unit. Take your two minutes now. You have two minutes where I won't speak. You can talk. You can fill your water. You can pee. Deep cleansing breaths. Whatever you need, Aiden. The next two minutes are yours. Yes. If you don't feel you need two minutes, oh, there's my Yahtzee scores. Not too bad, hey? 267 in that game. Yeah. Yeah, my phone doesn't work. What does she need? Oh, she told you to tell me. Yeah, my phone doesn't work. Oh, okay. Okay. It's awesome. I hate that phone. Yeah, but really all it is is thinking ahead. It is. <laughs> all right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. We are stepping back in time to grade 10 very quickly. It will take about 10, 15 minutes, then we'll be done, and then you'll be working on your own. Like I said, their first few units start with a rehash of grade 10, and then we move on. Add a bit of new stuff to each time. So let us do this. Uh, I will be color coding as always. Green, pink, and blue. The green number, A, is a coefficient. A coefficient, of course, multiplies... The next expression. Oops. Nice writing, idiot. Next expression. Where does that coefficient come from? That coefficient comes from... Whatever. Have a seat. Multiply, it comes from the breakdown of the radicand, which is the blue one, which I'm going to write about right here. X is the radicand. That is the number... I shouldn't say number because it's not always a number. That was bad. Sorry. The expression we break down. 
And of course, the last one there, N is the index. And the index we remember is the number of prime factors of the, no, I don't want to say prime, the number of factors of the radicand we seek. Okay, you all know this already. It's no big deal. It's not news to anybody. An entire radical is radical sign, index, radicand. A mixed radical is coefficient, index, radicand. They work back and forth. Sometimes you will have a mixed radical that you need to make whole to simplify something later down the line. Mostly, you will have a whole radical that you want to make into a mixed radical. Most of the time. Everyone is good, yes? All of you should remember how to do this. But the first thing I need to do is remind you of this. Never, when, never, when, never in this unit will you go to your calculator and go square root 72 and get 8.48 blah, 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 blah. Never. When? Never. When? Never. If I see you going square 72 equals, I will mock you shamelessly. Do I make myself clear? You are not going to touch that button, this unit. Good? Excellent. Now let's talk. I am going to show you the longest possible way to do this. You will all remember it when you see it. There are shortcuts. You may know them. That is fine. But... I never show the shortcut first. I always show the longest way because it always, 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 when? Always, when? Always, when? Always works. And if you learn that, you don't need to know any shortcuts because you will always get the right answer. So this is the long way, 72. Now, since there is no index there, what's the index there? Two, which means I need numbers of factors. I need factors in groups of two. Break this down into prime factors. Do I need to remind you what a prime number is? No? Excellent. I am betting... Most of you, your first two branches are going to be 8 and 9. I am betting most of you. Some of you may have 18 times 3. Huh? So, or 18 times 4, I mean. Some of you may have 12 times 6. Some of you may have 24 times 3. Some of you may have 36 times 2. But I am betting most of you have 8 and 9. I cannot stop there because those are not prime numbers. So I continue to break them down. Two, four. There's a prime number. Four is not prime. Two, two. Those are all prime. Three, three. Those are prime. So now I know that the square root of 72 is the same thing as the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which is the same as, since we're in the 11th grade, 2 cubed times 3 squared, right? And since that little 2 is telling me I want my number of factors to be 2s, I have 3 2s there, which means I can take out one group of 2. And what did I leave there? 
a single two because there were three. I can take out one group of threes. Did I leave anything there? No. So now these are both moved to the front. They are coefficients because I brought them out from breaking down the radicand. Since they're coefficients, they multiply and I get six root two. Right? All of you know that. All of you can do that. I am looking for groups of two, right, Yulia? Mm -hmm. There is two of them. So out I bring a two. There are two threes, so out I bring a three. And I left that two under there. Now, the shortcut is this. Since I am seeking a square root, any time I can break my radicand down into a perfect square, I can stop. Because square root of 72 is the same as the square root of 2 times 36. What is the square root of 36? So what comes out? 6, and what stayed there? 2. So if you can find a perfect square, you can stop. But only if you know your perfect squares. Okay? If you were in my grade 10 class, I said the best thing you could do in grade 10 was memorize the first 20 perfect squares, the first 10 perfect cubes, and 2 to the power of everything up to 10. If you did it, you will find this year very, very, very much simpler than you would have if you didn't. So let us look at 99. You could break it down into primes or you could stop at a perfect square. Most of you, I hope, know enough about your times tables to know that that is 9 times 11. And right there you're going to stop. Why? Nine's a perfect square. So what's coming out? Three. What's staying there? Eleven. So easy. Seventy-five. So easy. What's it going to break down into? Twenty-five and three. What's the square root of twenty-five? Five. So what's coming out? Five root three. Now, eighty is a bit of a problem. Because all of you are pretty good with your times tables up to 10. You're okay with your 11 times table. Your 12 times table is like that neighbor that you say hi to, but you don't actually know. And anytime after 12, you're like, what? Numbers are bigger than 12? I have to multiply numbers bigger than what? So, most of you will not immediately see the perfect square that is here. But I do, because I've got them memorized. 80 is 16 times 5. So, what's coming out? 4. And what's staying in? 5. Now, let's say you don't see that perfect square. You don't know that 16 times 5 is 80, like I do, because I've been practicing forever. You say, I got you, Myers. You're not fooling me. That's 4 times 20. Because it is, isn't it? 4 is a perfect square. What's coming out? 2. And some of you will leave that as your final answer. That's not okay, is it? Because isn't 20 4 times 5? So out I have to bring a second square root. And that's where I get 4 root 5. Who has to make those decisions? You do. All right? So what's the perfect square that's coming out of a... Ah, what's the perfect square that's coming out of 300? Thirty and ten? Are either of those perfect squares, Lena? No. But could you get to the right answer using thirty and ten? Of course you could. You would just break them down. Ask him what's coming out of here to make it easy in one step. 103. What's the square root of 100? 10 root 3. 
Now, Lena said she's going to use 30 and 10. Can we still use 30 and 10? Of course we can. That's 3 times 10. And I could stop right there, can't I? Because there's a pair of 10s. So what's coming out? The 10. Everybody cool? So notice you can even mix the two. Let's say you don't see the 16 and 5. And you go, all right, Myers, 4, 20, 4, 5. Oh, there's my pair. I bring out the four. Is everybody cool? Great. You guys do these three. What's this one going to be? Three root seven. Why, Ashton? Because it's like nine times seven. Nine times seven. And there's a perfect square. What's this one going to be? Four root two. Four root two. Why? Because 16 times 2. There's my perfect square. Why is 363 a big pain? Because it's a big number. So I'm going to break it down. What number do you know divides into that? 3. 3 and 121. Why can I stop there? Because 121 is 11. Is everybody good? It's easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? You all knew this in grade 10. Turn the page over. Number two there is a coefficient, yes? Which means where did it live originally? The coefficient had to come from somewhere where? Only we hadn't just written that. The coefficient came from under there, yes? So, if there's one two out there, what was the group of twos that had to be under there? Two of them, right? Which equals four. So this is also root five times two squared, which is root 20. Now there's a shortcut here. What should be the index that is written right there? Two. See how that little two has that little two right there? That's a nice hint. That means that is what lives under there. So what's this one going to be? 29 times what? 7 squared which is 29 times 49. And I'm not going to impress you because I did this in my head earlier and I was 100 off. It's the square root of 1421. Not, I said it was 1521. See, Karen, I didn't even try to lie because I screwed it up in Karen's class. And what's this one? This one's weird. Because what should go under there? 4 times 36, which is square root of 144, which is 12. You need to be able to think of all of these as the same thing. Everybody cool? you got to be able to think about it the same way. Now, you don't have to be able to think about it the same way in one second, but you got to recognize that all four of those things are the same. Cool? All right. Now, D is tricky. What do you think is the answer to D? Some of you already know. Some of you think you know. Some of you are going to write this down wrong. I just want to see. You already technically know how to do this question. So everybody write down what you think is the answer. Write it small enough somewhere that you can correct it if you screw it up. Because I'm going to write just the right answer here. And if you got it, awesome. If you don't, I want you to think about why it's the right answer. All right. The correct answer is, who would like to tell me what they think the correct answer is? Everyone but Karen. She already saw me do this to people. What's the right answer? 
Pardon me? So I have square... Uh, stupid highlighter. Square root of 300. Is he right? Why not? What is not in that answer? Let me ask you this. On a number line, where would that be? On the positive side or the negative side? Negative side. Where would this be? Right. So how are you going to fix it, Ashton? Because you're halfway there. Where is that negative going to be? Is the negative going to be inside or outside? Outside. Why? Because this is technically negative 1 times 5. The coefficient is the 5. Everybody cool? Because, of course, does this exist in the real number system? No. no. That exists in the imaginary number system that you will deal with in second year university. Math and physics. Not here. Okay? Everybody cool? All right. Your job today is the rest of 34, 35, and 36. And you have quite some time to work on it now. Since most of it is very quick. I will be coming around right now. But first, wait. You are working on pages 34 to 36. So now it's written down and recorded so nobody can say they didn't know. And I'm going to come around and get your score out of 36 from pages... Pages 23 to 28. You're going to give me your score. We marked it yesterday. Okay? Okay.